I find it very ironic that in 2020, we experience record firearm sales to women and minorities, such to the point that they completely evaporate the supply of guns and ammunition in the United States. And then suddenly, in 2021, we have bills that materialize in Congress, further restricting and slowing down the process by which Americans can legally acquire firearms in the United States. Now, you might say, oh, Kurt, that's a coincidence. I think not. I think either A, they don't read statistics, or two, they do read statistics, and I'm not sure which is worse. So either they don't understand the statistics and they are completely out of touch with the American consumer and why they are purchasing firearms, or they do read statistics and they see why Americans are buying firearms and they've got a real problem with the people that are purchasing firearms. Hi everyone, welcome back to the VSO Gun Channel. Thanks for joining us here today. It's excellent to have you here as always and thank you for watching. I just want to do a decompression video here today because we've seen a lot of movement this week and it's the same story that it always is. Within minutes of a tragedy in the United States, never let a tragedy go to waste. Elected officials, not even standing on the graves, standing on the corpses of people who were victims of a tragedy, politicizing it for gain. It's absolutely disgusting, and I am so sick of seeing it. And you want to know how to fix this problem in the United States? I tell you what you can do straight off the bat. Stop publicizing it, because the media absolutely is complicit in this. People who want fame, people who want to make an impact, people who are psychotic, use the media machine that has been generated in this country to get that. They absolutely do it. You will not never ever once on this channel hear the name or see the face of someone who has committed an atrocity like this because I will not be part of making those people famous like those people that you watch on TV. Anyway, besides the relevant bills that pass the House that are now on to the Senate and that are being filibustered, that aim to make your life miserable, and when it comes to managing your personal property, we've now seen a new push to go after those scary guns that are the most popular firearms in the United States. And I'm going to tell you what that is. They think that this is a low-hanging fruit for them that they can go after because they look scary and all that sort of stuff. And once they get that item that statistically is used in 0% of violent crime in the United States, it's just a hop, skip, and a jump to that thing that you use to defend yourself out in public on a day-to-day -day basis. Mass disarmament. That's what they ultimately want. And that's what they're going for. So understand that just like the bump stock situation, that if you even if you don't own an AK-47, an AR-15, a Mini-14, an SKS, any of those semi-automatic rifles, even if you're not into that sort of the game, that the end goal is to use that as a stepping stone. And think of semi-automatic rifles as an insulatory product, just like things like the bump stock is are concerned. Items like these are a check against your government. So let's say they pass that assault weapons ban. Or maybe they're going around picking up handguns after they've already banned AR-15s because, you know, they already banned AR-15s and they're such a small percentage of the crime that's out there. And handguns are a much larger percentage, so therefore they have that much more powerful of a mandate to go around and pick up everybody's handguns. Let's say they get that, right? Who's going to enforce that? The ATF ain't going to do it. I'm going to tell you that right now. The ATF can't even do paperwork. Do you think that they've got people to spare to go around door to door and pick up people's guns? No. That's going to go to all your local law enforcement. And I don't know about you, but I'm relatively friendly with my local law enforcement, just given the nature of my business. And uh, I can tell you right now, the answer is unanimous with them. I ain't doing that. Bro, I ain't doing that. For two reasons. One, we have some constitutionally minded people in my area in law enforcement roles. And two, even those that aren't super hardcore constitutionally minded are like, bro, I got kids. I can't get shot going into people's houses. This 
keeps your government from coming to your house and molesting you. All the power derived through the force of law is at the tip of a gun. Who holds the gun holds the power. And right now, it's pretty even. Right now, you got guns, they got guns. In many cases, the same guns. In fact, in many cases, your guns are better than theirs. Don't you dare ever call my guns military grade. That is an absolute insult to the quality of firearms that I buy, thank you very much. My shit is way better than the crap that the military has. And the government does not like that. However, I will expand it one step further beyond that. And that is, I have had a unique experience in the past several weeks of having a broken hand. And I am temporarily effectively disabled. And I'll tell you right now that operating a handgun is fairly challenging with a single offhand shot. Operating this heavy beast right here that our president seems to be so enamored with Buy a shotgun. is super challenging. He fired two blasts outside the house. I promise you, who's ever coming in is not going to... Operating this, by contrast, super easy. All the controls are ergonomically situated, and the firearm is light enough, compact enough, and powerful enough that I know that given that I really cannot get into a physical altercation with somebody right now, that this is my best chance for self-defense. I'm a person that works out quite a bit. And prior to breaking my hand, I would say that I was a five to seven days a week type person in the gym. And you can ask the people at my gym right now. I'm still five to six days a week, even though I got a busted meat hook here. And I may be reapplying my <laughs> efforts to other areas of aptitude inside that facility, but I'm still going. And it's just a way of life for me. It's a meditation time. And because of that, prior to injuring myself, I was a relatively strong person and I enjoyed all the benefits of being a strong person. Also, I have had the privilege of spending a fair amount of time in courses that the prime directive is to beat people up. Uh, I, either that or to not get beat up, basically. Some kind of combatives thing. I, I enjoy that sort of stuff. So, I am a person who does not fear physical altercation. Since breaking my hand, I have been exposed to the mental state that it is to be someone who is disadvantaged physically. Either a person who is disabled, someone who has questionable strength, um, not to bag on you guys out there, ladies, I'm still pretty sure I could take you. Or at least the majority of you. There are some of you out there that are just absolutely scary and could probably kick my butt before I was injured. Uh, I'm not talking about you guys. I'm talking about the general population. Let's just be honest here. That said, I know what it now feels like to have that anxiety of, hey, I, I really can't do anything to defend myself. Yeah. Which do you think it is that I go to first? Do you think I go for that heavy shotgun? Do you think I go for that handgun that I have to operate solely with my with my off hand? Or do you think that I go for something in an intermediate cartridge that's lightweight that I can operate with both hands even though one of them is broken? Which do you think that I go for? So, the idea of banning semi-automatic anything, whether it's got a high capacity, which is really a standard capacity magazine, Standard capacity for an AR-15 is 30. That's what's issued. 30 rounds. Sorry. Sorry. Lots of cuts in this one. I'm a little bit hacked off if you can't tell. Because, again, I am recently exposed, personally, to what I have been preaching for years. Which is, these things are excellent for the physically disadvantaged. This is the best thing that you can own for self-defense. Because it is so capable. Because it is so user-friendly. This is the best thing that a physically disadvantaged person can possibly own. And the idea of someone who walks around day to day permanently, I have a pretty good chance of recovering, going back to full strength and maybe even going upwards and onwards from there. But those that don't have that option 
for a government official that spends a substantial amount of their time behind barbed wire, in closed doors, protected by armed security guards to tell you what choices you should be able to make about your personal protection is absolutely disgusting to me. If you are a woman or a minority and suddenly your government is trying to tell you what you can and cannot do, I would be so pissed. Because you guys have made a statement in this last year and you should absolutely be telling your government. In fact, I beseech you to contact your government officials and tell them that what they are doing is directly impacting you because look, I'm just a, I'm just a fat white guy. Okay. They don't listen to me. They don't care about me. That's been proven time and time again. However, they might listen to you because they clearly do not like you. They want you for your vote. And if you think that if they think that you are going to threaten their vote because of some crap that they are doing, when it results in your inability to defend yourself, maybe they act, they might actually think twice. It is working. That's why we're discussing executive level action, even though they own all houses of government. And I know that we've seen some violence being perpetrated in this country as of late. The best thing that you can possibly do to ensure your safety is not to rely on your government. You are your own first responder. I'll be honest. You cannot rely on your government for protection. You never have been able to and you never will be able to and it will only continue to get worse as government is so further divided between so many responsibilities that they have no business engaging in. Take responsibility for your own protection and man, I, I, I don't know which one of those I want to I end on because I tell you what, I cannot imagine the hypocrisy of being a government official and be as patronizing as they are being today. It's gross. And if I were you, I'd be absolutely disgusted.